that's the only place to come to. That's the only place we've got you know, for music. The only place bands can play. You know, and I know everyone here. They're all friendly. Can't stand you no more. Won't go right to your place anymore. In London, uh, you, you were free to go out any night of the week that you wanted to. I mean, there was nobody stopping. There was no bombs. There was uh, no fear of sitting in pubs. And what has really happened is this is the first time in 10 years that the kids have actually been able to come together and be together without uh, sectarianism or politics or anything coming into it. The Hawk Bar in Hill Street is the Belfast Punk's only local. Here, three nights a week, punks meet to listen to their own bands, to dance and to let off steam. For the last 10 years, no major group was prepared to play in Belfast, so there was a dearth of music for young people, that is, until they started to provide their own. Places like the Harp developed, and here, without any well-meaning outside encouragement, Protestants and Catholics mix naturally. What they share is the fact they call themselves punks, and they like the music. In a way, the story starts here, in a record shop in Belfast Great Victoria Street. It opened two years ago, specialising in old 50s records and cheap imports from America. Word got out and it gradually became a place for punks from all over Belfast to meet, to talk and listen to music. I don't think any other record shop in Ireland would put up with what we put up with, where we've got more people standing around than we ever have customers. We don't make a lot of money is because customers can't get at the racks for punks and they're not going to ask them to move out of the way. There's about 12 or 20 of them standing here. Terry Hooley, the owner, Which gave up his job as a photographic finisher two years ago and opened the shop. As the punks came in, he got to know them. He realised there was no place for them to play or listen to the kind of music they liked. He saw the need for a focus for these kids and so the punk workshop started. We used to run... Uh, Good Vibrations punk parties for the bands. We would hire out a, a room in a hotel and we would hire the room out and the hotel probably thought it was a disco going on but in fact we'd have three three punk groups and we would do this for every hotel until we were banned from them all. And we did something similar at Queen's where we hired Hall and Queen's University <laughs> for an alternative project and uh, we put on seven punk bands and we'd never be allowed back into Queen's but we had a great night. And that was on the night when Thin Lizzy were playing in Belfast. There was 500 kids turned up to see seven bands. So it was a really good night, but Queens will never have us back. With local bands playing to enthusiastic audiences, the next logical step was to record them. So six months ago, Good Vibrations began recording local bands. It wasn't long before the music press in Britain began to notice what was happening in Belfast. Terry Hooley is determined that the integrity of the grassroots Belfast movement remains intact. All the big companies have started to move in. I think CBS, Virgin, uh, WEA, they've all wanted material from us, but we're in a position now that because we know we hate the music industry itself, we can't stand the business attitude. We're in a position now to, to hold back. In fact, that's what we've done. We had a follow-up to uh, Teenage Kicks for the Undertones, which got into the top 30. We had a follow-up to that. And if we had wanted to make money ourselves, we would have released it straight away. But we held it back for a couple of months to let the publicity die down. I mean, we're not really interested in uh, the sales across the water. It's more for the kids here in Belfast that we put out the records. If we sell 300 records in Belfast, that suits us, rather than se selling 300,000 in England, because we're not really going to that market. All the groups uh, don't sign a contract with us. They're on 50% of the profits, which is unheard of in the music industry, uh, which leaves them wide open if a big company wants to come in and they feel that they want to. And what we do in that case is we will talk to the company first, discuss it with the group, and then introduce both of them. Then the company, if they want to put forward a contract, we will advise the group with the best advice in England on the contract because we've got so many friends in England in the music industry but who have people who have been ripped off by the companies themselves to advise us. You say we, what's in it for you personally? Well, the enjoyment, 
mostly. I mean, the financial thing, any money which we make is ploughed back into other things. I mean, it's ploughed back into other groups for a start. Uh, it's ploughed back into the club. But, I mean, mainly the enjoyment. I mean, I really do enjoy it. I mean, if I wasn't doing it, I'd still be down watching the bands. Good Vibrations have recorded 20 local groups, like the Androids, but have only released six records. Their policy is to release the records gradually, one by one, so that each gets the attention it deserves. Apart from the recording studio, the reality of Belfast's punk rock scene is far removed from the glamour and sensation of the gossip columns. Greg Cowan, by day a contract painter, by night he's a vocalist with the Outcasts. The Outcasts play regularly at the Harp Bar and were one of the first bands to be recorded on the Good Vibrations label. Typical of most of the local bands, for them it was a question of cheap Woolworths guitars and amplifiers, and then just getting up and playing. The audience liked them, and then, even to Greg's surprise, they soon built up a large following. One of the few English groups prepared to come to Belfast was Clash. About a year ago, Clash played the Ulster Hall, the support band, the Outcasts. Oh, well, it was the highlight, really, of our career, if you could call it that, even. Sort of, you know, one, one minute you're playing at the harp to about know, 100 people, and suddenly the, the next night you're out in the Ulster Hall, it just seems like... You always thought the Ulster Hall, you know, only big people play the Ulster Hall. So one night you're there, in front of about one and a half thousand, two two thousand kids, you know. And we went down expecting, you know, to get booed, you know, jeered off until the clash came on. But suddenly people seemed to know us. Like when we went down, they thought, you know, we were a someone. So we went down using the uh, clash's gear, which was excellent. So we, it's, you know, because the gear was so good, it just seemed to lift us up and played sort of the best a gig like we've ever played but like now you know like it was at that time it was great but then suddenly you know you go home you get up the next morning you're in work like it just seems all like you know it was a dream that night it's like you know it's all it all seems sort of hazy hazy now really is working as a house painter as satisfying or is a painter as satisfying as Playing to two thousand. Well, like it isn't as satisfying. But like at times, you know, you can come in like maybe something's gone gone, gone, gone wrong with a group. You can come in like and just blast it all out in a big wall. You know, paint at the at death. You know, you can like that's what playing's about really. Anyway, getting you off your stresses, your anxieties out. You know, in front of a crowd, painting, you can do the same nearly. What would the ultimate ambition of the group be? Well, I suppose it would like to be a major record su success and to have a hit record and hopefully a hit album as well. Like it would be, it, you know, it's for everybody really to know the name of the outcast, you know, and you know, just be a popular and well known. But like, you know, then again, like they say ambition has its drawbacks. You know, you look at all these big groups, they all say, oh, you know, um, these things at the top aren't, aren't all they're, all, they're uh, cut out to be. Well now, like, playing to small audiences, but good audiences, you know, audience who we like playing to and who, who like listen to us, like, in its own way, you know, is fulfilling as well. So, like, I'm in t a two minds, really, whether it would be good to make it or maybe, maybe not quite all it's cut out to be.
another, rock music has always been a revolt. In a city like Belfast, with so many tensions, being a punk is not just a fashionable pose. Punk rock in this town crosses traditional barriers, but as we well know, tradition dies hard in Ulster. And to those who profit from division, the punks are seen as a threat. You're singled out in one way by being a punk, just like everywhere you are. But here you've the problem of religion. Why? Tell me why you're singled out again. Because punks are of all religion, we're not worried. But there's people here who want to see religions mixed. Mm -hmm. And we really? get hassle from that. In, in what way? It's trouble. Is there anything special about the Belfast punk scene? Like, there's more to it. Is there more, more life in it now? Yeah, there there's is. more life from Bel Belfast, Belfast punk, punk, punk than anywhere else. anywhere else. Because they say they've got a message, you know, they want to bring the two two people that gather, you know, it is mixed. It's not as if we're just from single, sorry, singling out people. We just know they gather in it. And like, you go to places like London, like, or as I'll tell you, their punk's completely different. Like, we've got something to work off, you know, work off the troubles and all. We only do that through Hogan and the music itself. We're no longer punks, just, you know, because it's something new, because it's the only thing we've got now. It's only There's no other. Want. There's nothing else in Belfast. Whereas in London, if, you know, you can be a punk, there's plenty of places to go. But if you're not a punk, you've still got somewhere to go. But here, we've got this place, nowhere else.